when a high school boyfriend took my virginity without asking me first, I went a little crazy. I wish I could tell you now that it was a cool kind of crazy, like set fire to his car and waiting to exhale crazy, or even a cute crazy, like Carrie Underwood keying her boyfriend's car crazy, but it wasn't. Did I break up with him? No. No, of course not. Instead, I did Olympic gold medal worthy backflips of logic to convince myself that I loved him because I had to stay near my pieces. I stayed with that dude for three years. I withered away in silent shame all the way down to 90 pounds until I finally came clean on our living room couch to my 17-year-old brother Jim and our best friend Joe. And they leapt up off the couch and were like, please break up with him, please break up with him, dear God, break up with this guy. And it had not occurred to me that I could do that. So we made a plan. Tomorrow I would break up with him and tonight we would practice. Except three hours later, Jim found me curled up in a ball on my bedroom floor, heaving, sobbing. And he scooped me up like a baby and rocked me and I just kept saying, how did I let this happen? I think I must be a bad person. I feel broken. I am so, so broken. And this 17-year-old boy sat me up, held me by the shoulders and said, now you stop that. I don't ever want to hear you say anything like that again because you are the best person that I know. You save my life like every day in a hundred ways you don't even think count. And anything you say bad about yourself cuts into me as if you said it about me. So, so stop crying and um, I'm gonna make you the best sandwich you've ever had in your life. <laughs> that was the day that Jim taught me that words can save lives. Jim didn't see pieces when he looked at me. He saw all of me. Even when I was covered in bruises, he didn't think I should be thrown away like a bad piece of fruit. Somehow, my brother knew at 17 what most adults still don't. There are no pieces of me. I cannot be broken. I can be bruised, shaped, dented, sure. But I am always whole. My mom's life calling was very simple. She wanted to be Mama Smith. She was mom to every teenager and kid in our community. The front door was always open, the snack cabinet was always full, and you couldn't pass her in her van without her rolling down the window, waving to you and saying, hey, I see you, I know you, and I love you sky big. Her wholeness was the sun and kids just gravitated toward it. Even when I can't feel it or see it, the sun of my wholeness may be covered in clouds, but it is never gone. And it was with me when the police told me that my mom and Jim had been killed in a botched burglary in our home. In her killer's confession, he said that he killed her because he knew that she recognized him and she wouldn't stop screaming. She recognized him because she made it a point to wave to him every day because he was a troubled kid. And she wanted him to feel seen. It was with me when the media swarmed when the national news picked up the story and strangers everywhere started to whisper that my life was over. It would have been really easy to buy into the look in people's eyes when they looked at me and saw nothing but debris. Would have been really easy to believe the college professor who two weeks after they died looked at me and said, oh my God, you are never going to be okay again. Thankfully, I'd had better teachers than him. I'd had Miss Graham. The first day of class, she didn't even introduce herself. She just launched into our first writing assignment. She said, who are you? What has shaped you? Who do you want to be? She took off her glasses. <laughs> she rubbed her face. And then she very calmly walked us through the loss of her two sisters, her father, and her husband. The room started to spin, each of us drawn off balance by the magnetism of her trauma. With a wave of her hand, it stopped, and she said, but I'm the happiest person I know. These things have shaped me, they have changed me, but they are not who I am because they are not who I've decided to be here. So who are you? And at that moment, I tethered my heart to this perfect woman. And because of that, she was there encanting to me all through my 20s that this would shape me, but it could not break me. That I couldn't control what happened to me, but I alone got to decide what it meant. Most importantly, 
Miss Graham taught me that I am always bigger than the parts that I play. Give yourself permission to heal your wounds. I promise you, after these past 10 years, it will take everything you've got. It will take every ounce of compassion, courage, talent, and skill you possess. And because it takes everything you got, it will show you everything that you are. And once you've seen that, it's impossible not to show up fully to everything, to be whole. It's the bravest thing that we do. Because people who know how to do that, know how to help other people without constantly abandoning themselves. They actually know how to form a pack of whole people who know how to stand in their goodness, who see people who are hurting and don't just walk by, but get down on the ground with them and say, hey, I know how much this hurts. I know that you're bleeding, but you are not broken and you cannot stay here because anything bad that happens to you happens to me too. So we're gonna do this together.